Uh, hey guys, welcome back to Lords of the Fallen. This is episode 17, I believe. And we're gonna walk right into a conversation here. What are you doing here? We saw this shining door while running from the Rogar, so we jumped in. Could there be anything worse? We can't get back now. And the captain? He'll never forgive us. We're trapped. You escaped the Rogar and came here. And how on earth could we know where it would take us? You better leave. Well, we were on our way to the tower by the bridge, the one on the right. We thought we'd hide there, but there's a powerful demon guarding it. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Oh! So... This this quest has several different outcomes, depending on what you do. We're going to try to help him out. But, uh, first I gotta talk to him again. You returned! Did you clear the way? What happened to him? This place is swarming with monsters. They got him bad. If he doesn't get any medicine, he's done for. Please, you must have a spare potion. There. That should do the job for now. Alright, I uh, figured I might as well help him out. Excellent, press circle. <laughs> the, uh, the old Bloodborne switcheroo. I did do a test around, so I shouldn't be screwing too much. Screwing up too much on controls, but what can you do? There are a lot of archers in this uh, plaza now. There's like four of them, so it can be quite dangerous, especially if you kick when you don't mean to. And since I haven't died in a while, I don't have... Or... I don't have maximum potions. When you die, it does refill your potions, but when you're, uh... I think that might have been friendly fire. It... When you just tap a potion fountain, you can only get, like, four back. And especially in New Game Plus, you'll have, like, 17 potions, so yeah. The best way to refill them is just to die. Which might actually do before the, the next boss. Or I might die right here, depending on if this archer hits me or not. Doesn't appear so. I think there's still an archer left, but I'm not sure where he is. So, not gonna worry about it. Anyway, for the quest back there, they said go to the tower by the bridge. Well, if you look around, there's not really any towers to be seen. But we do know that the bridge is where we started. So we can sort of infer that they mean one of the towers to the left or right here. And it turns out it's the one on the left. And I notice there's a big enemy down here that wasn't there before. So we gotta kill that guy and that'll help finish the quest. I think there's at least three different outcomes to this quest. But Was interesting. Don't know if I've ever seen that grab before. There's at least three different outcomes to the quest, but this is uh, the the most obvious one or the easiest one to accomplish. Uh, for the other ones, you have to do specific things for them to actually work out, and I don't think I've ever gotten those to be fully functional. But when I killed that enemy, there was a quest complete noise, and that means that was the one we were looking for. So now we just run back over to the guys, and suddenly they'll give us a reward. Uh, right here, correct? Yes, okay. You returned! Did you clear the way? Yes. We won't forget this. Here. It's not much, but it may come in handy. Okay, he gave us the protector weapon, which is a pretty good dagger. You see, it's not even better than needles, but... It's still decent enough. Um, 
It says the dagger was used as a favorable weapon of Antanas' closest guards in the past. When asked, they would say, who will protect the protector? Okay. So I guess these are uh, human weapons. We can infer from that. They don't. They don't look super duper human. Like the daggers are pretty jagged and so forth. But I'll take your word for it, game. We did get it from a human guard. So that's something. Uh, even though they're slightly worse than needles, I'll be using them for the next dungeon, just for some weapon variety. We will be getting an upgrade in two dungeons and a pseudo. No. You see, it was looking for me. And now, it's found me. Will it help me travel dimensions? No. But it will let me. Should you need any runes crafted, I'll be there for you. Okay, so... Sorry. <laughs> he interrupted my, uh, my train of thought. So, we will be getting an upgrade, and we'll be getting a... in two dungeons, and we'll be getting a side grade in the next dungeon, which I will show off. We but meet again. What that, uh, rune that we got from the big spider was... Anil... Infiltrator? Is that the name of the boss? I think so. <laughs> the, uh... was a teleporting stone, so now whenever you walk up to an anvil... Anywhere in the world, it will give you, uh... Oh, we're getting pretty lucky here. It will give you, uh... What's it called? Um... Sorry. Every time you walk up to an anvil, you can summon the crafter, and you can craft from anywhere in the world, essentially. It's like you find an anvil. These are scattered all over the place. There's pretty much at least one in every area. Uh, right now I'm going to show you how you exploit the crafting again. system. But first, since we've got three common powers, we might as well stick those in our armor. And it only lists the pieces of armor that have sockets. You see that all the heavy armor, or all the gloves that have sockets are heavy armor. So even when you're playing a rogue, it's generally in your best interest to wear heavy gloves. But uh, power runes are definitely the best for armor see that the rest do magic defense, fire defense, poison defense, and equipment capacity. Equipment capacity is okay, the other ones are questionable because there just aren't that many enemies that have specialized attacks. And the bonus you get from physical defense is much higher anyway. And you can see that I'm already improving these pieces of armor by like 20% 20, 20 or more than they would have neutrally. So this this went up to 33 from 19, so it's almost twice as good just because it has a socket. And I will probably start using heavy armor relatively soon, but we'll hold off for now. So what you want to do to exploit the crafting system is what you would do in Diablo 2 or what you do in Diablo 3 on the console version, which is the, the game only saves the state when you use a state point, so we can just see what uh, what runes it opts to give us when we use our big runes here which are limited supply and we want flawless luck runes basically so if we don't get them then we just jet out to the uh, the main menu and I'm not gonna expose this to you for too long just this is just a demonstration since it should fit in the scope of the video And then we go back to our save file, hit continue, and we'll be back exactly where we were. And we'll be, or we can continue once again trying to find more, or get more value out of our uh, runes. And if you don't do this, it's entirely possible you'll never get a flawless luck rune, because you only get like 10 big runes over the course of the game, so... We meet again. You can't really mid max your character if you don't have them. Let's try one. It's poison again. Okay. I'm really tempted to reset, but we'll just take it. Uh, and I already have the flawless poisoner, of course. And there's a bunch of crap. Okay. So I'm gonna move on into the next little area here. We're gonna revisit the graveyard and. 
it'll be different than the last time we were there. Though, well, actually the last time we were there was, it was in its present state, so we'll see that again. place to die. What happened here? We escaped through the catacombs. There's an ancient path which leads to the cellar of the citadel. I did not make it. The others jumped into this open pathway. You, you were on the other side. Why? I stopped the Rogar attacks. So there's still hope. You have to tell Antanas. Maybe then he will stop doing these what? Go through catacombs. And Danis, you see. Now we, they should give this guy best actor or something. What a magnificent voice acting performance that was. Uh, he, he drops a human tattoo, and that's basically the other way to go with this quest is... You can potentially kill all of the the guards or let them die, and then turn the ha the tattoos into the captain. But I'm not going to do that. And we're back here in the graveyard where we fought the the worshiper or the worshiper, whatever you want to call him. And now there's enemies here, so the the first three enemies are going to be unremarkable things we've seen already. But the fourth one is fairly interesting. Here. And you can see he's not doing that much damage because we socketed our armor with power runes, so we now have nearly heavy armor worth equivalents of stats, even though we're not wearing heavy armor. Um, so here's here's the first boss of the game in, uh, in enemy form, so that's an interesting facet of the game, as you could fight... Well, this is the only one. I'll spoil it for you. This is the only enemy that comes back as a regular one and he does uh he does do the armor breaks but you can still get full full damage on him if you're in the right situation so it's not like a guaranteed uh, defensive crack but uh, the first time i did this i just killed him in one combo I hurt well. Actually, to be honest, he, uh, not to be honest, but more correctly, he killed me once, and he, he two-shot me, and the other time I, I killed him in one combo, so it's definitely possible to do it, even though I can't do it against him normally, but looks like he's transferring to this part, we might as well poison him. I don't know, looks like he's immune to poison, which is a boss, so... We got him. And these, he hits extremely hard, so it's, it's worth noting that you don't want to get bonked by him, even though he has a lot less health than he used to. He still hits hard, or possibly harder than he did previously. But that's uh, that's going to do it for this video. We're ne at the next video, we're going to enter the door behind the graveyard here. And we're going to go back into the catacombs. This time I'll actually bother killing most of the enemies. And hopefully I don't get lost. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.